All right, so I'm in between uh, some CNC projects at the moment. Um, my garage shop is a disaster, but I would really like to get uh, swapped over to my new super longboard. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do today. For the most part, um, CNC Labs has done an awesome job on their write-up of the swap over from a regular longboard to a super longboard. And for the most part, that's going to work just fine for the conversion on a X-Pro V5. So I have my Ultimate B currently set up with an X-Pro V5. The long mill product is not that dissimilar in the way that it moves. Um, so a lot of this should be pretty transferable, but that's what we're here to find out. Uh, one thing that isn't transferable is you do, if you do buy a super long board, um, you don't get the connectors for the stepper motor um, because the long mill uses uh, the same uh, connector on the old board as the new board. They didn't include those. So you do need to buy some Phoenix connectors to connect your stepper motors to the uh, super long board. Uh, so these are the 5.08 um, pitch, uh, which the uh, X-Pro V5, it comes with the, I think they're the 2.54 uh, pitch. So you do need a, a slightly larger um, connector for the super long board. So I'll put a link to the ones I ordered from, from Amazon. So you do need to swap those connectors over. Not a big deal, but it is a thing you need to do. The other thing you need to do is would be advisable is to go into your software. Um, I'm just in Gsender here and grab some of the uh, values. The one specifically that you want um, is the, or ones you specifically want are the 130, 131, 132 for your max travel. And then also your steps per millimeter and any other settings you might have customized um, because obviously this is gonna be a different firmware. Um, those settings aren't gonna just transfer over, so you are gonna need to have them uh, written down somewhere. So I do advise you write those down somewhere. And other than that, I'm going to shut the power off to my controller and take it offline. And I'm going to start swapping things over. So I'm going to disconnect there. Uh, basically going to follow the instructions. I will maybe pause and give a brief overview as I'm going through stuff. And then I'll kind of go through it at the end uh, once I have everything up and connected. So I'll switch to a time lapse. I thought I would just uh, pause here and kind of go over uh, the super long board. Uh, so this is the old um, X-Pro V5 from Spark Concepts that I'll be swapping out. And this is the new super long board that I will be putting in this place. So that's the layout of the board there. As you can see, uh, the, these are all populated. So if I pull that, so these have the receiving end, so I can connect my cables to these jacks here that are included. Um, but again, because uh, the old board used the same uh, Phoenix connections, they don't give you uh, the plug-in end of these. So you do need to supply those yourself. So these are ones I sourced on Amazon for this job, and uh, you can see they fit just fine. So those are what I'll be using going forward. Okay. So I'll switch back and I'm going to start swapping some of those cables over. So I stopped there for uh, a minute. Um, the reason I stopped is if you're coming from the X5 controller, uh, you need to note that the power, uh, the way that this, so this power connection will work for your uh, super long board, 
you don't have to worry about that. But what you do have to do is change the positive and negative. So the way that the connector goes into their board, um, if you were to just straight plug this in, um, you would have your power on the wrong, the wrong side, the wrong polarity. Uh, so you do need to switch it. So the plug will work. You don't have to worry about buying a different plug, uh, but you do need to switch that around. Double check your manual. Mine is, is definitely that, um, that way, and I do need to reverse it. Uh, but just confirm that. You, know. you can see here this terminal block is where the limit switches go. Um, so I've connected the, the various limit switches, but the thing to note is they all have a common ground on the old controller. Each one had a separate ground connection. Uh, so this one they share ground. So right now I've kind of got them all crammed into this last uh, jack on, on this port here, which isn't ideal. Uh, so I'll come back and I'll uh, do that differently. Uh, but just note that if you are connecting your limit switches that you are going to have to come up with something for that. The other option is to re-terminate them down to these, um, I don't know what those are, uh, JST connectors uh, down here. So if you can see those. So there are JST connectors down there for those limit switches as well that you could use. Um, I'm using the terminal block. Uh, I may switch over to these. I do have some inductive probes I plan to use at some point, uh, but for now uh, I'm going to continue to use this block for for now. So after uh, some a little bit of trial and error and a little bit of mucking around, I have the super long board uh, installed and the machine uh, configured. So inside of here, I'm not totally happy how that mounts, but I'm going to fix that. So in here is uh, the super long board and all the connectors. Um, in one of my previous uh, talks, I had discussed the limit switch issue. Uh, so basically that is that there isn't a discrete ground for each one. Uh, so I use this um, connector to basically create a common ground and all of the limit switches plug in here. And then there's one pigtail that goes back to the ground switch uh, or the ground block in here. And this fits just fine inside the case. So that's how I accomplished that. As well as the probe, um, I've connected the uh, probe for the original bulk man. So that is the probe that comes with your original kit, uh, just to the probe um, connector on the board, and everything is happy there. So if I come over here, I've got my probe. When I test it against my spindle, everything is good. Is I've set up RS-485 uh, to the spindle. So when I was running the... Uh, X Pro V5, I wasn't able to get RS-485 working for whatever reason. I didn't spend a ton of time on it. I got PWM working on it, and it was okay. Uh, but it was never quite right. I couldn't get the spindle to settle in at the right RPM. Uh, so I've now got uh, RS-485 set up. I will put my VFD settings. This is the H100 VFD. Uh, maybe switch this here. Uh, this is the H100 VFD. So all I'm using is the two-wire uh, RS-485, and I've just used a uh, CAT5 cable. I just cut a section of CAT5 cable, picked two, um, two strands, and used that for the plus and minus of 485, and it's working just fine. Uh, the only other thing of note uh, that I didn't cover yet is just the e-stop. So this is the e-stop and just uses a uh, cable that they provide. So this connector plugs right in here and then comes up to the e-stop and runs up to here. This is a 3D printed mounting plate that I made that allows you to use some M4 
uh, threaded inserts onto the base uh, so that you can secure the emergency stop to the 2060 rail uh, that is on the Ultimate B. So I'll provide that file in the description as well. Uh, like I said, I'll uh, here's provide the, uh, the VFD machine. settings. Set up. And I'm going to do a homing sequence. Okay, and we'll move it 400 mils in X and Y. And Z seems to be working well. Okay, so I'm really happy with uh, how that moves. My I'm not sure if it was my, I didn't do anything mechanically, so it's a little interesting because I used to have quite a squeal um, when I was moving the Y axis. And in the super long board setup guide, it recommends using 32, um, a micro step setting of 32. So I did have to reset up my um, steps per millimeter and my, um, my micro stepping, but ultimately for whatever reason the machine is much quieter while moving in the y the x was never a problem but the y always had a little bit of a squeal to it um so yeah interestingly enough that that is no longer there so i'm super happy about that and then the part that's super important and that i'm really happy about is two things one is the fact i can um so in g sender it has the spindle, so I can go to spindle, and you can see that I have the H100 selected as my spindle, and then I can set an M3 for turn the spindle on, um, as well as set the speed. So right now I'm asking for a speed of uh, 7,500 RPMs. I'm gonna bump that up. I believe in the VFD settings, I set my minimum at 8,000, so I am going to change that, but I'm gonna set this at 8,060. And I'm going to turn on my pump. Right now that is manual, but I'm hoping to change that in the near future. And the other thing I got from Amazon not too long ago uh, was just a laser tester. So I do have a collet here or a nut, sorry. I did put this on reasonably tight and this has a reflective piece of tape that comes with the um, tachometer. So I've put that on the nut and so my hope is to just validate that the spindle actually spins at the requested speed. So in G Sender, uh, I've got my spindle selected. I am going to send an M3. Spindle starts up, which is awesome. And then we will do a test. So there's the laser. And if I can get hold everything straight. So you can see the readout. Hopefully you can see the readout. Uh, 8,069. We requested 8,060. This is now 62. 67. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so just for fun, I'm going to bump the speed up to 12,100. And we'll just check that again. Yeah, I can't find it. There it is. All right. So there we go. 12,109. So validated that my spindle is uh, spinning. I did check earlier with a tape flag just to make sure it was spinning in the right direction after I get everything set up. Uh, but it's spinning in the right direction and spinning at the right speed. And I can now send an M5 stop. And that works there. So 
that is super cool. Uh, definitely one of the things with the PWM that was not as seamless. It, it worked. I uh, definitely stopped and started the spindle, but it wasn't nearly as seamless. It, it did some funny things sometimes, and I got some, uh, some errant results. Um, but this seems to be working awesome. So that's fantastic. Uh, the other thing I just want to check is that the e-stop is working. So I am going to uh, send an M3 again. So there's an M3. I'm going to turn the speed back down. Doesn't need to spin very fast. So right now the spindle is running, VFD is running, and I'm going to tell it to move um, 400 in the X and Y. And we're going to move that and stop button. So the spindle spins down, the machine immediately stopped, and on the super long board, uh, you can see the red light, it's gone into error status. And there's a couple other status lights that indicate that it is stopped. So I think that overall, I'm really happy with the uh, setup and the outcome. I will include, like I said, some of the settings that I've used uh, in my machine. And I will continue to probably tweak them a little bit as far as the speeds and acceleration. Um, but I think I'm ready to get cutting. Awesome. Hope this was helpful. And if there's any questions, let me know.